just like all of us are. So with that, uh, Supervisor Matt Ryan. Uh, thank you, Sheriff. And, and I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out. Um, um, very difficult situation. Uh, one thing that I've gotten to know uh, over the years, I've, I've been doing this for 20 years and representing you out here. Uh, there's a strong sense of independence uh, in this area, but whenever anything happens, you come together as a community. And, and that's what my, my comments are mostly about right now is, we need you as a community, the sheriff needs you as a community uh, to, to help, uh, to be the eyes and ears, uh, to, to bring in support for one another. Uh, and uh, the other piece of it is uh, to, to get a sense of uh, feeling comfortable uh, in your own community. Uh, Y'all uh, rally together, uh, helping each other, and you can bring in support for one another. Uh, I also want to say, you know, the county, we always have been, but just to assure you, uh, we're behind the sheriff all the way. Um, uh, we'll give him the support that he needs uh, to do what he needs to do here. Uh, in the meantime, you have a great uh, sheriff's uh, office uh, that's out there. They're working hard. Uh, the more that you can work together to be the ears and eyes for them, uh, to support them, to listen to them, and work together with them. That's what we need from you. So with that, I'll just keep it short and pass it back to the sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about, the, uh, I think, a little bit of history of, uh, of the area as it relates to burglaries to try to, I think, keep things in perspective. Uh, Lieutenant Tilzer mentioned that you can see some of the burglars we've had, and this is last year as well as into this year, how scattered out they are. And some of you know about them and some of you don't. And, and communities have a very good or bad informal way of communicating information. My hope is that you share with your neighbors. And at the end of today's meeting that, that you get to know your neighbors and you get to watch out for each other. You all know there's a lot of rentals, there's vacation homes in the area, there's a lot of vacant homes in the area. And we in law enforcement can do our job, but we have to have you, and we have to have your trust in order to be effective at doing our job. I think that'll become more evident uh, throughout, throughout the, the next 15 or 20 minutes as I continue to, to give you uh, information. Give me, I'll give you the chronology of events. Uh, Tuesday morning, we were contacted and advised of a, a double murder, a double homicide is what we call it in, in, in my business, that my, Michael Demura and Nora Demura were found dead in their home on, off Spring Valley Road. Uh, a tragic, a, a, a very brutal double murder. And this is very disconcerting to, to us as well as you as members of the community. And these are the kinds of events we pull out all the stops. Every resource that we are capable of mustering is put on this. All of our detective division is put out. All of our people that we're able to, to uh, bring in for patrol are put on this. In addition to the other agencies, we work well with the other law enforcement agents. We work very well. And sometimes you don't see it, but we have a lot of agencies helping us, working with us, because none of us in the law enforcement community within the Williams area, Flagstaff area, or throughout Coconino County is large enough to manage an event or manage an incident like this without one another's help. So we mustered a lot of, of, of people in it. A lot of things we didn't know, a lot of things we still don't know about this. How many perpetrators were involved in this? Who could have possibly done this? Were there other situations out there? And we didn't know any of that. And there was not a lot of, of indicators at the scene as to who did this, why it occurred, how it occurred, other than it was a very brutal double murder. Um, we put out attempts to locate, we had a missing Jeep, the Jeep that you see in this picture, the Jeep Liberty. We put that out, not just to area agencies, we put it out throughout the Southwest. 
for everybody to be on, all law enforcement to be on the lookout for this vehicle. Um, we engaged the Arizona Department of Public Safety, a lot of their staff, their forensic teams. We had three different teams come out of the Phoenix area dealing with a, a, a shooting reconstruction team, an evidence collection or forensic team brought up as well to provide that assistance. We also had the assistance of Williams Police Department. We're so close to Williams that they were providing assistance to us. We had the FBI involved, and they continue to be. U.S. Marshals involved, and they continue also, as well as Homeland Security. And all those agencies bring assets, bring capabilities, bring resources to us that we would never have on our own. And that collaborative approach and those relationships that we develop over the years all help us to be successful in investigations. Uh, and and I, I think on a personal note, I, I lived here back in the early 1980s. I was in Lieutenant Tozer's position as a lieutenant. And I got to know a number of you. Uh, I'm a little older now, or a lot older. And, and I've seen a lot of things, and, I, and I've experienced a lot of things. Brian talks about, oh, I've got 23 years with the agency. I, I hit 43 years next week. So that's enough. All right. Uh, but to see communities come together, to see communities experience tragedy, uh, you can make the best of it or you can make the worst of it. You can use this as an opportunity to pull together or you can use this as an opportunity to become divisive. You know, there's great concern when, when a tragedy occurs and there's bad guys out there that we don't resort to going vigilante. That we as a community all of a sudden develop great distrust amongst our neighbors or amongst anybody coming into our area that we don't know. That we run out and buy a bunch of guns and start arming ourselves because we're so worried about what could happen even though very unlikely. So I'm not telling you not to have guns because I have them. But at the same time, be prudent, be respectful. Use this as an opportunity to know your neighbors, to look out for each other. And when they're out of town, you see something, you say something. Should something suspicious develop or occur, or you've never seen it, uh, uh, that vehicle at that home, this is the opportunity to call us and say, I don't know if it's a friend or a neighbor, but nobody should be there because they're out of town. Call us and we will send somebody out. You know, the impacts can be great, but the opportunities can, can far outshadow those. Yesterday morning, we were, we had our, what we call attempt to locate out for this Jeep. And we've located this Jeep. It was by people who took enough time to say something wasn't right. It was citizens in southern Colorado who said, something's wrong, this doesn't look right, and they reported it. They contacted the sheriff's office up in, in Dolores, Colorado and reported it. That's the kind of, of ask that, that we're making of you to see something, say something. It, this was not, it didn't fit the character of the area. It was along the river, outside Dolores, Colorado. So we began to work with Colorado law enforcement agencies to, to look and see what was going on. And this all came as a result of a tip from a local resident in our community. A tip came in from a resident that maybe this vehicle and a person associated with this is in southern Colorado. And that began everything relating to locating this Jeep Liberty. Well, throughout the day, we continued to work with Colorado law enforcement agencies. And we developed a possible suspect in this.
throughout the day, we continued to talk. We had, uh, we, again, we were working with a number of Colorado law enforcement agencies and uh, developed additional information about a uh, possible suspect. And uh, late last night, just after 9 p.m., I received a phone call from the sheriff in, in Dolores County. Um, a person, uh, we think, and are very comfortable relating to being the suspect on this homicide, was involved in a high-speed chase in southern Colorado near Dolores, had obtained an, an, another vehicle, not the Cherokee, or I'm sorry, not the, uh, the, the Jeep Liberty, but he uh, had obtained an, a, another vehicle, had been surveilled, and this was the, because of the tip of another citizen in the community. Uh, he observed that, or saw that the law enforcement was watching him, jumped in his vehicle, and a high-speed chase ensued, and uh, firing shots at the pursuing officers from the vehicle. They did what's called a pit maneuver and flipped his vehicle, and he is now in custody in Montezuma. <laughs> I think it's important to, to know we are comfortable, very comfortable that this is our homicide suspect based on a variety of circumstances. He's also wanted on five warrants out of Colorado and that's why he is being held. He's not held, we have not arrested him on our homicide charges uh, at this point. We have investigators that are hightailing it up there right now. Uh, to look at the vehicle as well as to uh, uh, continue our investigation. So uh, again, to uh, such a tragedy to lose these two people, but when a community comes together, uh, we can do wonderful things. And, and your assistance and your understanding and your attentiveness certainly helps pay off in these situations. Because the information that led to us being successful came from your community. Again, we need you to do this. So, um, I want to thank you. Uh, there, there's a lot more to do. There's lots and lots of evidence that we will be looking at. There's lots of things we, we there's a lot of things we don't know at this point about this case. Uh, the suspect's name, I can give you now. He is not a local resident of this community. He was visiting from Colorado. His name is Derek Sean Barnett. He's 29 years old from Grand Junction, Colorado. So with that, um, I know it's been tough. Um, very, very difficult for all of you, and, and hopefully you'll you'll sleep better tonight, because again we're very we're very confident and comfortable that this is uh, the, the suspect, a suspect in this double homicide. So again, uh, thank you. This information is you know pretty fresh here, and uh, we felt it was necessary as we're confirming all night. A lot of people have been up all night trying to confirm things and get details that we were here and able to provide good information and accurate information to you and to uh, thank you as a community for, for your help and support on this case. So uh, we can try to take a few questions uh, if possible and uh, uh, We'll do the best we can to answer, knowing well that we can't share a lot of details because we don't want to jeopardize any future investigative efforts. Yes, ma'am. Do you feel that there is other persons involved that are still out there? She asked if we felt there were other people involved. We don't have reason to believe that at this time, that there are any, that there is anyone else involved. Yes, ma'am. 
What time did the incident happen? It, we believe around uh, after 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, after 8 p.m., sometime after, after that. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Monday night, Monday night. Yes. Does anybody know if there was a particular reason why they were in that particular area? She asked if there were any, uh, if, if we knew why, why the perpetrator was in that particular area. We, uh, that's part of the investigation. We have some ideas, but not enough to, to really give it a, a definitive answer to that. She asked how many bullets on scene. There were a number of them, but we, um, I'm not able to, t to say that yet. We're, we're still processing evidence, and, and it's going to be a while, but it will be, that information will be released eventually. Yes, ma'am. Do you know how long he was in the area? He, is he responsible for any of the burglaries? The, uh, she, she asked if he, if, how long this suspect was in, in, our, in our community, and if, or he could be responsible for the other burglaries. Not sure, he, but we, we think a number of weeks, not a long time. And is, is he responsible for other burglaries? Uh, we don't know at this point. We, we do have a suspect in custody by the name of Randy Rivera <coughs> that we have arrested for a number of burglaries here in our community, and he'll, he will be in jail for some time. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, he asked about uh, the number of spots for, for the burglaries. Uh, one is 20, these are 2016. Those are 2017, but there are, there are more burglaries in other areas farther out. We tried to keep this, this uh, uh, map focused on the area uh, immediate around uh, June Pine Red Lake. But yeah, there, there's some other burglaries, but not a, a, a great amount. A, a few other ones in some areas. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm not able, he, she asked if there was forced entry into the home, and we're, I, we're, we, we can't say yet, but we, we will. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sir, did, did you find another car? How did the suspect maybe got to this area? She asked how, if we found another car, and how the suspect got into the area, and that's still part of the investigation, and I, I wish I could tell you more, but when we're investigating and we're so fresh as, as having this person identified and in custody, we can't share a lot of things until we have that chance to talk and speak, but a lot more details will be forthcoming down, down the road. Yes, sir? Were the deceased in the house found in the house? Uh, Yes. Uh, one was in the home, one was, was outside the home. What was the question? Uh, they asked about where the deceased were found. One was in the home, one was outside the home. Yes, sir? What time of day are these happening? Are they happening at night, evening, afternoon? Uh, mostly evening time, dark. So when you see flashlights around your neighbor's home? Yes, ma'am. No, this took place at 8 o'clock the previous evening. And you knew about it the next morning. What took so long to release the bolo on the vehicle when the children were coming home from school and so many homes were empty? Okay, she asked why it took so long to release the, the be on the lookout for the vehicle. We didn't know for a, some number of some hours what vehicles they had. Uh, Are could have vehicles? been. Huh? That's why we called motor vehicles would have taken that care of. Well, we did. We made phone calls to a lot of people. But confirming that we have one vehicle gone, two vehicles gone, she'd asked earlier about was there an, were there more than one perpetrator. 
but but the attempt to locate was put out on the vehicle pretty quickly. As, as soon as we identified it was missing, that went out to area law enforcement agencies. We were not alerted until after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's, that's correct. And he probably was. He was probably in another state within just a few hours. So why was not at least the information I think it's part of our investigative efforts. I think we need to look about how how we put out information that is so important that we don't either panic a community or that we raise people's awareness. Uh, we got a, pr a press release as soon as we're able to determine facts. What we don't want to do is six press releases in six hours that keep building. We want to understand facts first, what we know, what the level of, of danger is, if we can determine that, uh, before we put out information. The question came up in the past, why didn't we put out a code red to our community about We've got a we've got a, a, a murderer or or several suspects in a murder out in our community. Well, not knowing who it is, what they look like, potentially what they're driving, uh, does doesn't do a lot of, of good in our community other than we, we put out the, the general press release, we had a homicide. And I think we need to be careful that we don't we don't create panic either. That that we we give people accurate, timely information as we get it. Because what happens is if you put something out that is incorrect, or you put out information that isn't cor uh, accurate, that people only remember the first one. And so finding out uh, uh, about the, uh, the Jeep Liberty that we were looking for making sure it was taken by the suspect or suspects and what else is there other vehicles associated with it how many that's what we wait until we're able to to give good accurate information before we put it out so, yes sir uh, we are looking at a number of other suspects Without, I, I can't give away the farm at this point. Um, yes, there are there are se several other individuals that we are looking. At. Yes. In the back over there, sir. As you look at the crime scene, was there any indication that it was an ultra violent crime scene, as in somebody wanted revenge on them? Was it just an execution for random? That's a very tough question. Uh, and if it, 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 in trying to answer it, I'm going to I would give away investigative information that could cost us. It was a very uh, disturbing crime scene. Uh, and and again, in out of out of respect for our our the family and and the victims. Uh, I, I want to leave it at that, and I apologize, but I, it, it was not, it was a very um, disturbing crime. I'm sorry. Was there any sign of force injury? I can't, I can't, I'm not going to say at this point. Again, I'd love to get more details, and, and they'll be given out, but I don't want to jeopardize our investigators' ability to obtain more information. Uh, it, very tight. Timely is, is so vital here. Yes, sir. Was the vehicle the only thing taken? Was the vehicle the only? No, there were other. Uh, there were other things taken from the home. Ma'am. As details become available, how do you send that to She asked about how, as more information becomes available, we we'll, we'll use local media and to to put information out. And we also have our, our, our website, Facebook page, that will put, put out information. 
and, uh, and Lieutenant Tozer uh, will, will be able to provide things as, as more time passes and our investigation starts concluding, more details will be out. But again, we're looking at a, we're looking at a, a, a trial, a, adjudication, the criminal justice system now will kick in after an, an arrest is made. And, and, you know, these take two years sometimes to go to trial. Yes, ma'am. Was it drug related? We're not saying yet. But, but most of these situations, we do think these have a, a nexus to drugs. He asked about what we can do to be more aware of the, the, the burglaries. Uh, we post the, this information is available on our website. It's called Raids Online. You can see what's going on in your neighborhood. What activities, not just uh, not just burglaries, but other activities that the sheriff's department investigates that are crimes are available on that website. So you can look at your own neighborhood and, and see things. What can you do? I, I think is take care of your neighbors. Take care of yourselves first, but then keep an eye on your neighbors as well. Uh, develop a relationship. If you don't know your neighbors, get to know them. And uh, I think you, we accomplish so much more when we work together and, and we're more successful when you have our community's help. Yes, sir? What was the name of the website? Website. It, it's uh, coconino.az.gov and it, the sheriff's office uh, web the page you can go to that and it will link you to whatever uh, you need to yes it has a list of our, our uh, information okay. yes sir about more patrols being provided. Uh, we're, do, we're doing what we can with that. Uh, uh, drugs are prevalent throughout our, our communities. Not, I, I don't think you're, you're, you have any higher level than most other communities uh, in, in the county and we'll patrol it. If you know something, or, or we would appreciate information and we will keep it confidential, but that's what we need in order to be effective at our job. Yes, sir. Uh, when you made the arrest of the one individual on Mustang, there was, what, five or six people there, and you had to let four of those five leave uh, because you had nothing to hold them on. My question is, have you kept track of those four or five people? Because most of us in the community have a good idea that they were involved in the robberies. Um, so have you kept track of those four, and could they possibly be uh, involved in this murder? He asked if we're keeping track of the other individuals, and that's a hard, I mean, we can't, we can't dog them. We can't follow them around, but at the same time, we we're well. <laughs> She talked about people walking the neighborhood. The sense of community that people have is, is what they'll create and tolerate. 
and, and it sounds like you have a very tight-knit, uh, engaged and active community. I'm not encouraging you to do anything other than what you just talked about, but the would see something, say something. Uh, we need your help, and, and you know, we have limited staff, we have limited capabilities. Things take time, and, and, and we'll be working on them. Uh, we can take just a couple more questions, and, and uh, then if there's some other uh, information that, that uh, I'll, I'll talk to uh, my staff, we'll try to get that. So, Did you get back to the rest of my answer on that, if you would, please? As far as being able to follow them? Yeah, I do. He's asking, what can we do? Well, I can't. I don't share everything that we do because it's it's important that we're able to operate in a community with your trust. But also, when we, clearly when we do something, people come in, make an arrest, and be gone, and not try to make a, a, a fanfare out of it. But you're. I, I think your concern is absolutely valid. We want them out of your community as much as you do, but I think it's important that we do it legally. It's like, it, it, that's why I can't release so much information on this case, is why I don't want to lose a legal battle or a technicality where somebody walks. Because we did something... Because we may have done something that that in, in, in trying to, to keep you informed, we released something that could jeopardize a, a part of our investigation down the road. I'm just looking for a sense of comfort. You do not have to when I go outside and look all over my property to see if somebody's out there waiting for me. There, he, he talked about being comfortable in your community, and there, there's, a, it, there's a term called situational awareness about you. And how what you see and how you feel and, and 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 instead of driving down the road on your way home doing this, Amen. pay attention yeah. to what's going on in your. Yeah. It's paying attention to as you drive home, paying attention to a car parked in front of your neighbors on the way, who's walking down the road. What are people doing? Situational awareness is all of our responsibilities. Or it comes under us, so that, that's important. Uh, I can do one more question, I'm really sorry. I'll be here for a few minutes, and my staff can also answer some questions. Yes, sir. Can you post uh, pictures of these people that are doing burglaries on the website? Uh, we have the, the picture of Herrera is available, but the other ones have not been arrested nor convicted. So we're not able to put somebody's picture out who hasn't been arrested uh, in a case. Last question. Uh, not a question, but a statement. You, sir, and you, and you, and you, and everybody who is full-time has volunteered. We haven't had an opportunity very often in a group setting to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are the people that do the work. I just get to kiss babies and shake hands. <laughs> so again, uh, thank you very much, and we will be around for a few. Sleep safely tonight. We're, we're very confident we have our guy. Yeah.